Yeah, right, okay, two. Um, and, yeah. Good room? Uh, yeah. I haven't checked in yet. I leave oh, my bags. Yeah. yeah, okay. Two, 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 two. I'll just get a lovely from you guys. That's all right. My daddy was a bank robber. My daddy was a bank robber. You know, my dulcet tones will always be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Darts. this is Ben, and as promised, uh, the Manic Street Preachers are back on the show. James, Nicky, good to see you. Hello, hello. How are you doing? It's good to be back. Good yeah. to talk. It's been a while, hasn't it, really? It's been too long. Yeah, yeah. You Look, wouldn't have us back? Well, after last time. You're you always welcome. We disgraced, always... We, dis we disgraced ourselves last time. You swore time. at the V Festival, I seem to recall. Uh, uh, smoked uh, in the studio as well. Listen, the... that wasn't me. No, it wasn't. <laughs> were you smoking? Was it no, you? No, no, no. I got told off for that, and I didn't even smoke. Uh, listen, we were saying just before we came on the air that uh, that you guys are very, very busy, and we were saying that's clearly a good thing. And, uh, I mean, the reviews say wonderful things about this new album and the new single. It's getting a lot of airplay. Are you excited about that? Is, is it something that, even after all these years, still makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand out? I think you and yourself on the radio is still the biggest thrill that you can get, you know, because this what we grew up, what grew up with is just listening to records. It's really make you feel good, give you energy, stimulate your mind, stimulate your brain, you know, mm. and your body. And uh, to hear us on the radio again is really refreshing, really exciting. But is a break from the band, and the band's been going for, for quite some time now, is a break from the band a healthy thing, do you think? Yeah, I mean, kind of, um, you know, if you've been in the band for as long as we have, you know, kind of over 20 years, um, it's kind of, it's easy to get self-indulgent and mm. it's easy to start it reinvestigating yourself and and you know trying to become a different version of yourselves and sometimes you just need to take a break step back from it and uh, and just you know just having that break just helps you find what the band was really about again so it's helped us to be more direct basically you say a break but obviously you were you were pretty busy during the the manics hiatus on on various solo projects did that sort of uh, is a solo project a good way of doing exactly what you want to do and not having to sort of compromise within a band and it then is, when you get back to doing the band thing you, you kind of know where you are creatively again. i think it is quite a selfish thing quite a vain thing that's what makes the best solo albums if you really stick to one idea and you know mine happened to be tuneless feedback but that's all right. <laughs> and, uh, hey, I, got, I read some good reviews for it. I know, if you like that kind of thing. But that, that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's, it's, a, it's probably a really pure form of self-expression. But when you get back to the serious stuff with a the band, then you've decluttered all your kind of idiosyncrasies and you're back to what you want to do. But do you find that when you're doing a solo project, that actually you, sent, you, you tend to write a few songs which you go, actually, do you know what? That isn't a solo project song. That's a Manic song. Um, I think there was perhaps one song on my album that... Long way to go. Yeah, Manic, Definitely. Manic could have made... You know, Selfish, have, he kept that for himself. <laughs> could, have made a, could have made it a 10 out of 10 instead of an 8.5 out of 10. Um, and there was one song on Nick's album that I, I really thought that Manic could have done. But kind of, that's what was good. When, we came, when myself and Nick came back from our solo records, you know, we weren't wanting for songs. You know, the songs just really came, came spilling out of us kind of thing. So it was, it was, it was so easy. Just taking that break... You know, just re energize us and we just wrote the songs in record time. Fans would say, though, so, uh, okay, we enjoy the solo track, which you think could be a Manix record. Why not make it as a Manix record? Why not stick it on as a, as a sort of a, a special thing that you can download from iTunes? Because I'd like to hear it with all the sort of the. It's tarnished now. Really? It's tarnished. Yeah, it's tarnished, with, people, tarnished with failure, he thinks. <laughs> The reviews. No, I didn't mean that. I tarnished with other musicians. <laughs> the reviews for the uh, for the new album very very good. In fact, NME says uh, a big sort of headline last week: "Manics are good again." Okay, which is nice to read that. But I think to myself, well, do you guys do you guys agree with that, or do you go, well, hold on a second, we weren't ever that particularly bad. Well, like, the way a band views itself is always going to be different to the way its audience views it, or, mm. or, or journalists views it. You know, themselves. You know, um, kind of like you know, like say on our last album, Lifeblood. You know, we really kind of went down a road of self-indulgence, you know, kind of like we, we tried to find, you know, a kind of an alternate reality version of the Man Street Preachers, tried to find a different version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're stuck in the middle of that creative process, you can enjoy it and you can understand it and therefore you can, you can like what you've done. But sometimes it's easy to confuse your audience, you mm -hmm. know, and it's easy for them just to go, no, hang on, uh, you know, I prefer kind of like the anthemic kind of punk rock and roll manager. Yeah, but hold on. When you're in a band for 20 years, I think you're allowed to, from time to time, do something that you want to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, but that's what we did. You know, <laughs> I, we love Lifeblood, and I think it's, it really caught us. We achieved what we wanted to achieve with it, but, you know, it did, I don't think it connected with our kind of hearts, really. Mm. Perhaps con uh, connected with our brains. <laughs> but sometimes you just, you know, as a kind of self critique of culture you know when the enemy is single of the week this week in the enemy which we haven't had for years and years that still makes me feel good because that is it's still kind of 
the lifeblood of British music, oh. the enemy. We're very lucky in this country to have a music magazine every week. Well, your you love keep... alone is, is A1 on Virgin Radio, and I think we're not the I only know. radio station. So, you know, that is... Uh... The PRS is flooding in again. Yeah, exactly. Those checks, <laughs> you'll, you'll know, uh, you'll know uh, when they come in, in, in about six years' time. Oh, we'll have to buy ourselves a winning beer, don't you worry. <laughs> For the festivals. What's the idea behind uh, Send Away the Tigers? Is it another sort of... Uh, because in the past, you, you've sort of gone for political commentary. Uh, what, what's the sort of backbone, if you had to sort of summarise this album... What's this album about? I think the real the reality of it is it's about reconnecting with the things that stimulate you, that you fell in love with when you were maybe 20, 22, 18, you know, the, the kind of the naive idealism what you feel when you're that young, you can take on the world, you oh. know, you're less cynical. And we, I just think we needed to get that. There's always politics within us. That's just because it's something we're interested in. We don't force it down people's throat, but... You know, I was lucky enough to go to university and do politics. So it'd be a lie uh. not to write about that, uh. just to write about, you know, love or nightclubs or something. It just would be false. So um, we've just always done what we were interested in. But I think there's, it's just all about that energy and reconnection. What are the, uh, the new bands that you admire? Who, uh, who do you think sort of floats your boat at the moment? Because obviously the music industry is a slightly different music industry to the last time, Big time. that we caught up. And actually, I, I think it's a better music industry. I think there's more sort of guitar music. Uh, you know, actually, smash hits folding. It just goes to prove that there isn't really, uh, you know, Bitchy. there isn't really a sort of a pop market anymore, no, is there? I think it is. There's loads of good bands, you know, whether it's Maximo Park or Claxons or you know, Bright Eyes. I absolutely oh. love the Bright Eyes records. There's loads of good music. I'm just not sure if there's a staying power within those bands. You have to sell with your first or second album oh. these days. I think there's a lot of pressure on young kids. But that is frightening for these new bands because a lot of these, a lot of these sort of the heritage artists that we still have. You know, I mean, Queen wouldn't wouldn't have been around if no. if, if you know they didn't. No, get I mean, kind of like you know, at the end of the day, you know, I kind of next got this theory that like you know, bands like ourselves and Blur and Radiohead only really caught fire on our third albums, yeah. kind of thing. You know, whether regardless whether it be a commercial success or critical success, and that you know, and this is certain truth in there. You know, would a band be given the chance to get to its benchmark third album now? Mm. Perhaps. And then of course, you know, all eyes on the Arctic Monkeys, their new album. You know, and everyone's saying it's even better than the first. And what happens when the next album isn't quite as good? Is it all over for them? And that, you're right. I think they must be under incredible pressure. Yeah, I think it's different for that, for them, perhaps because they're a genuine phenomenon. But I mean, there's a lot of stuff underneath which oh. kind of second album could be a scary place to be. <laughs> now, festivals <laughs> and uh, and UK tour. Uh, are you doing? Are you doing V? We are. Yes. Excited about that? I mean, you're, you're the veterans, aren't you? <clears throat> yeah, no, I'm so looking excited. forward to it. Um, Jim's here as a solo thing, but we haven't played it as a band for a long time. <laughs> I think it's about 2003 since yeah. you last played it. We've just grown to le like festivals. Uh, you know, at the start, me and Richie struggled big time. You know, there was no electricity. There was no way to put your makeup on or, you know, have a sneaky dress change or anything, you know. Um, but as festivals have changed, I think we've changed and we kind of enjoy them a lot more than we used to. Well, listen, we're going to take a break and then we'll come back and you're going to play live for us. Uh, what are we going to get? We're going to get some, some classics. We're going to get some new stuff. What's uh, the game, James? We're kind of like, um, we're going to be playing. If you tolerate this, your children will be next. Yep. And then a couple of new ones. All right, okay. Stay with us. Manic Street Preachers on this show after the break. It's Virgin Radio Drive Time. <laughs> 